Hello everyone. This video is going to be describing a technique for adjusting a bond ball mill grindability test result to give you a work index that is appropriate for a different particle size than what the test was run at. The same technique with a couple minor tweaks are done for uh, morale MIB numbers and you will sometimes encounter situations where a test was done at a size that might have made sense at the time but is no longer valuable for the work that's being done in front of you right now. So this technique allows you to adjust the basis for a ball mill work index result because of course ball mill work indexes change as a function of particle size. Uh, see episodes four and five of this video series for a description about why that's the case. Key thing here, this is a tutorial that's going to describe how you can take a block of data such as this data here which is coming from a public source. This is from the Heart Gold 43101 report where they have a series of data based on a ball mill closing size of 74 microns which is quite fine that gives a product size out of the ball mill test around about 60 microns the mine is actually running at something more like 150 microns. It's quite a bit coarser than this. So the problem statement here, if we wanted to use this test data, is there a way that we can adjust it to a coarser basis than what was actually observed in the laboratory? Now, obviously, if you know ahead of time going into the laboratory test what the size should be, set up your test to, to get the proper output size from your laboratory test that matches the industrial plant. This technique is done in situations where it's already too late to adjust your laboratory program and it's a way of salvaging data such as this we see on the screen. So the method that we're going to use to provide this compensation, there, there's a paper by Josephin and myself published in Chile. It describes how you take three or more ball mill work index determinations on a reference sample. Each of the tests that you do on that reference sample is going to be done at a different closing size. And with that, you're going to build a signature plot for the reference sample. So yes, you can build signature plots for bond ball mill work index data and so on. Once we've done that signature plot, we're going to pick the exponent off of that signature plot and use that as the basis for adjusting all the other results in the data set to the new size basis. Now you can do a similar process to this for the Morel MIB numbers equations are slightly differently. Um, there, there's a slight complication in that the, the way the exponents are handled in the Morel's equations make it a little more difficult. But fundamentally, that's still the, the same compensation. You're going to run signature plot and make an adjustment. So this is a tutorial. We're going to use some published data from Heart Gold in Ontario. We're going to generate a signature plot for a reference sample that is published in a different 43101 report. And here you can see a block of data for different closing sizes and different product sizes generating different ball mill work indexes. So we're going to use this as the basis of generating the signature plot. Uh, just note here that there's also some extra data here where they ran some duplicate samples at other labs. That's a useful quality control check to do occasionally in the program. And there is a repeat sample here which we can add to this block of data up here. So I have loaded all of this data into a spreadsheet. So we've got some November data and some August data. We're going to use this August data as the basis of our reference sample. So the process that you use is generating the signature plot. So we're going to add here the bond equation. So this is a shorthand equation that works for the bond equation. And there's our, our set of data. 
We can do the same thing for the Morel equations. I'll come back to that a little bit later. So now that we have the specific energy consumptions, we can generate the signature plot by plotting the P80 versus the specific energy consumption. And we'll just use our regular spreadsheet plotting tools to do that. So it's a scatter plot. We just want to see points. Okay, so there's some raw data, and then we're going to throw onto that a trend line. And the trend line we want is the power type model. Let me just clean that uh, up a little bit. There we go. Okay, so what this gives us is the specific energy consumption as a function of size. This is a signature plot. You can see the exponent here of minus 0.88. That's not what you would expect to see with a bond type equation. Bond, this exponent should be about 0 0.5. And this says a couple of things. Again, it, I described this in earlier videos. Um, top level description is that the bond grindability equations are kind of calibrated for a coarser size than what you're doing a lot of ball milling at. And each ore has its own particular desired exponent. So this is what we're measuring in the signature plot is what is the exponent that this ore actually wants to, to use to express itself. So that's that. We've got our signature plot. We can move on to the next stage in the um, recalibration of this old data up here. Now, the process that I'm going to use, it's also described on the, the SAG milling wiki page. So I'm going to go down to the laboratory test work section, and there's a whole description here about how you do the ball mill work index adjustment. So again, you're doing the, you're generating a signature plot. In this case, I've got one for the bond equation, a different one for the morale equation. What we're going to do is generate out of the signature plot what the coefficient is for each of the samples that we want to adjust. That's this k value. So we're going to use the work index we generated in the test, the P80 we generated in the test, and then we're going to use this exponent that was measured in the reference sample. Okay, I guess I should probably move this down so that I'm not covering it. Uh, so again, this is this is the exponent. Now, um, let's just define what the particle size is that we want to do the adjustment to. So I'm going to set that here. That's my target P80. And the equation for the K comes from Josephine's paper times work index of the test times the P80 of the test, power minus 0 0.5, minus the F80 of the test, power minus 0 0.5, and then you divide it by the P80 of the test, except now with the exponent that we pulled from our reference samples signature block. So there's, there's the K value for that sample. So if we had done a signature plot for that sample, this is what we would expect to see as the coefficient for that sample, given that we have assumed that it has this exponent that we measured on the reference sample. So I can take that and copy it down, except that I have to set that to the, yeah, there we go. Okay, so. We've got a series of these k values, these coefficients. We can now use the other equation from Josephine's paper to do the adjustment of the work index. So what would this work index look like if it had been at a 150 micron P80? So again, this is, this is gonna be a synthetic work index with this, this correction on it. So the value of k times the P80 of the test, Nope, this is the P80 adjusted. So we want P80 adjusted is there. And let's just set that to the power of, to the power of our 
uh, signature plot exponent divided by 10 times bracket the P80 adjusted, which is there, to the power minus 0 0.5. So this is Bond's exponent minus F80 to the power minus 0 0.5. Just double check. Yeah. And then we can close that bracket and close that bracket. So there's our adjusted work index. It figures that we should go from something of around about 14, way up, you know, take this chart, it'd be up here somewhere. And we should bring it down to something on the order of 11. So let's just see if that makes sense. So let's expand this. Let's get the axis, there we are. So let's set that axis to 15. And let's see, so we should be about 14 and a half at 75. So right about there. And we want to bring that down to probably something like about eight and a half. Well, it actually says 11. All right. Copy those down. Oops, missed something. Ah, that's what it is. Got a set dollar sign there. There we go. Okay, so let's just do a quick quality control check here because this this change from 14 to 11 to 12 kind of number might look a little odd. So let's just move this guy out of the way for a moment. I'll put you down there. I'm going to move this data over here. And I'm just going to take these two and drag them down and let's compare what we're predicting here for our reference sample if we ended up at something approximately 150 microns so we want to see something that's just a little less than nine and that's what we get so quality control check here we go back to the reference sample it does what we're expecting it to so yeah that's you know, it looks like this is correct. We're going from about 14 and a half to 15 down into the 11 to 12 range, going from uh, from a fine work index test to a much coarser um, industrial application. Now, in actual fact, Heart Gold is is running at about 100 microns, not 150, but I'm using 150 just to make sure we were you know we're using as much of the data as we can to show you just how big a change you can see when you're doing some of these things. So again, really important to get the work index testing done at the proper size if you possibly can. Otherwise, you're going to have to do these kinds of adjustments, and you, you can see these adjustments. These are big numbers. Okay, now we're going to do the same thing, except we're going to do it for the Morel MIB number. Now, um, there is a published equation out there that can be used to adjust MIB numbers for different P80 sizes. We're going to do it this way using Josephine's concept, because this is going to be far more robust than a more typical equation that's calibrated to a normal, typical, average OR. So we can go back to our database here, and let's fill in the, uh, the Morel data and generate its signature plot. Now, I always have to go back to my notes because I can never remember what this equation is for the exponents. Okay, so there's F exponent is going to be equals 0 0.295 plus feed size times 10 to the minus 6 and the same for the p exponent I better move that out of the way or it's going to get whacked in a moment okay so then the morale exp um, specific energy consumption equation 4 times the MIB number times the P80 to the power of the P exponent 
minus F80 to the power of the F exponent. Oh, that's not right. What went wrong there? Oh, these are negative. That's the problem. Okay, let's put the negative sign there and let's put the negative sign there. That looks more like it. I need those exponents too, don't I? I'm going to generate this for the whole works here. So, here's our calibration data set again. So let's basically do the same idea as here, except this time we're going to take the specific energy consumption using Morel's data, which is right here. And there's the P80. So we're going to plot this against that. We're going to get a new signature plot. And points and next and finish. Okay, so there's there's our new signature plot. It looks pretty similar to the bond one. Let's just make sure that we get these things aligned. So there we go. Yeah, so that's good. You would expect these two would give you pretty similar um, signature plots. And then there's the equation. Format the data so it's a little easier to read. Okay, whoops, that's not the right one. We want the power model. Power model. That's better. Okay, here's our new model. Now we have a different exponent here. This is normal. The, when you do the specific energy consumption using the Morel uh, specific energy model, right? that's the one involving the MI numbers, you're going to get a different exponent to correct that versus the exponent that you would see in a signature plot using the bond third theory equation. So this is normal. Usually there's like a 0.2 to 0.3 difference between them. So yeah, with th this is the sort of difference I would expect to see. So this is perfectly normal. We can take that now and plug it into this equation and generate a whole set of new MIB numbers. Now, I don't want to sit here tapping away on the keyboard while you're watching me. So I'm just going to pause the video, get the math done, and then I'll pop back in and show you what it looks like. Okay, I'm back, and what we've got here, we've added a column to the spreadsheet for the K value, the coefficient, using the Morel uh, methodology. And we're using the exponent that we pulled off of the Morel signature plot, which is here. And then you come up with the adjustment to the MIB value, which is this equation you see down in the bottom of the wiki here. And pay attention that sometimes you have a negative A, and sometimes you're going to see a positive A. So there's a positive A here. That, that's the exponent. So be, um, it took me a couple tries to get this right because I had to keep checking to make sure that my exponents were positive when they're supposed to be positive and negative when they're supposed to be negative. So the end result is the MIB number goes down dramatically from the 63 microns up to about 150 microns. And we're going to do the same check down here on our calibration sample. So what we want is a result where the 150-ish the micron MIB that we measured was about 947 and the value that we get out of the adjustment is about 9.17. So that's not too, too bad. It tells us that you know, we're kind of in the same neighborhood here, that the MI numbers are much more sensitive to P80 than the work index numbers are. And there's reasons for that that have to do with the calibration of the, uh, the data sets that were used in these two different models. But the key thing, you, here's the methodology to, to correct or to salvage some information 
out of a series of work index tests or MIB tests that were done at a size that's different from the one you want to do modeling. And as you can see from these examples that sometimes these, these changes can be quite dramatic going from a particularly very coarse to a very fine or very fine to very coarse uh, data set. So just to wrap up some conclusions, Bonds ball mill work index changes with PAD size. We've seen that. So does Morel's MIB metric. In fact, it does more so than the bond does. So the solution that we've applied here is to, uh, to build a signature plot for a reference sample. And then you can use the exponents from that reference sample along with Josephine's equations to adjust whatever else you've got in your data set to a new PAD basis using the exponent that you pick off of your reference sample. Now obviously you need to choose the reference sample wisely so that it has an exponent that is same as what you would expect for the rest of your data set. But other than that, um, you should be good to go. So with that, I'll wrap up this talk and talk to you in the next video. Bye bye.